Good morning, and welcome to St. Mark's on this the first Sunday of Advent. This being the first Sunday of Advent, today we begin a new church season as well as a new church year. We thank all those involved with our decorating for Advent and the making of our Advent wreath. Throughout the Advent season, we will be using setting five from With One Voice, and our candle lighting song will be Light One Candle. A word on the, the liturgy, please note that in the gospel responses, they are spoken and not sung for the said. Our 2022 offering envelopes have been updated and are now ready for you to take with you. They are available in the narthex. We also ask for your help if you know of any of your friends and neighbors who are members here at St. Mark's and have not picked up their offering envelopes as of yet. If you would please help us out and take theirs with you, that you might distribute them to those folks as well. Specific instructions regarding Holy Communion are printed for you in your bulletin. A reminder that all who trust in the risen Christ is present in the elements of bread and wine are welcome at our Lord's table. We have some additions to our prayer concerns. Family of Kay and Liska, we extend sympathy to them and hold them in prayer in Kay's passing. Also, if you would please remember Cindy Huff in your prayers. If you are joining us today by way of video, this worship service is a recording and is not a live stream. Its bulletin can be found on our website and Facebook. Appreciation to our videographer, our lecturers, cantor, and song leader, our communion assistants, and organists. We begin with our brief order for confession and forgiveness. I ask those who are able to please stand.
memories from 1st Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct, well, direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase in abounding love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness, that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to you. Church in America is a liturgical Christian church. 
That means we follow a specific rule or liturgy. To be part of a Lutheran church is to praise, worship, and live out the message of Jesus in a very specific, theological, and historical way. We Lutheran Christians embrace a church here. The church here is cyclical and proclaims the message of God's salvation through Christ. The church here serves as a safeguard. It reminds us that all of what Jesus brings is important, relevant, and of God. And it keeps us from preaching and hearing only those parts of the gospel that we like. Our God is the God of promises, and so we begin the church here with the season of God's promises, the season of Advent. Advent is a time of waiting, but it is an act of waiting. And as such, Advent asks three things of us. First of all, Advent is here to remind us remember that God is large and in charge. God governs by God's own timetable, and that takes to get used to. We are so used to doing things when we want, and according to our time, according to our convenience. We love instant gratification. We literally have a conniption if we have to wait two seconds for something to download on our devices, or that we have to wait a minute or so for something to print from our printers. Advent reminds us that God acts in God's own time. It's the difference between chronos, literally clock time, and kyrios, the Lord's time. So Advent asks us to remember. Secondly, Advent asks us to, to prepare. Do not, please, do not rush into your Christmas celebrations. If you do, you will be sure changed and sorry. Every worthwhile event needs preparation. You don't celebrate a birthday before the guest of honor arrives. So we should not celebrate Christmas before Christmas arrives. Don't hurry and hasten through your Advent wreath or Advent calendars. I know it's tempting to check under every little flap, especially if you have a chocolate Advent calendar, but don't do it. Let it minister to you. Prepare. Finally, acknowledge that Advent is a season in its own right. It has its own color, blue. Blue is the color of anticipation and fulfillment. Advent is not simply the time the church gives you to dust off your nativity set. Advent proclaims the gifts of what Christ comes with to give to us hope, peace, joy, love. Read a devotional, and there are quite a number of devotionals that St. Mark's has made available. Attend a Bible study, the Bible study that begins this coming Wednesday, December the 1st. Get to know some Advent hymns. Don't run away from them. Don't pass by them. Let this season speak to you and learn to cherish its message. These themes of an Advent is what our scripture for today proclaims. Jeremiah, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up, says the Lord. Jeremiah tells us that the people of God 
The Lord is our righteousness. Notice that the prophet tells us that we are to be a righteous people. That means more than simply saying, righteous, Lord. We are a people of faith. We are a people of God's justice. And not merely people of morality. Because morality is a standard for non-believers. Righteousness is our standard. Going beyond mere decency. Going beyond the bare necessity of what is required. To not merely be our brother's keeper, but to strive to be our brother's brother. The Lord is our righteousness. Paul in 1 Thessalonians, May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another. Paul is proclaiming that as God is, so God will make us. We are to be in and of the Lord. We are the saints of Christ. We are to see ourselves as sanctified in Christ and to learn that that in itself is a very big deal. Finally, Jesus from the Gospel according to Luke. Be on guard that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation, with squandering, with drunkenness and the worries of this life. Jesus is saying to us that it's not from the ways of this life that society holds so dear that brings true happiness, but from life according to God and God's promises. From the values of hope, peace, joy, and love. Our hearts are not to be weighed down by spirits, by alcohol, which only gives us a temporary feeling. They are to be buoyed by God's Spirit, which is permanent. For God's Spirit helps us enjoy all of life more, helps us to celebrate in the way of true celebration. We are not merely to, quote, have a good time. We are to have a good time in the Lord, that our celebration may truly be joyful, rooted in Christ, and permanent. These are the things of what Advent means to us. These are the gifts that Advent brings to us. And even after we learn of these things, the questions and concerns persist. Why aren't we hearing the Christmas story? Why aren't we singing Christmas carols? Why are we sporting blue candles and blue banners? Why isn't the nativity displayed? The simple answer is because it's not Christmas. It's Advent. And what the world forgets, people of God are bound in Christ to remember. So, Happy Advent to all of us. Amen.
neighbor of heaven and her, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, will proceed from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead in the light of the Lord. Hear us. 
grace will die. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus, the one who has come and has promised to come again. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray in the words of our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
receptacles are also provided for your convenience. Please take note of the many activities and ministries that are scheduled for the very near future in our community and here at St. Mark's. Remember that our Advent Bible study begins this Wednesday, December the 1st, Fellowship Hall at 12.15 p.m. This is a change from previous years, suggested by our Faith and Fellowship Committee, and as well as our Worship and Music Committee. So please remember Bible study at 12.15, Wednesday, December the 1st, in Fellowship Hall, all are welcome. I believe our council president has an announcement to you. Good morning. In two weeks, on Sunday, December 12th, we will be having our annual congregational meeting. Services that day, we will just have one service at 9.30, hoping that we can have as many people as possible here to do a couple of things. You may have noticed coming in a copy of the proposed budget for the coming year. We will be discussing that if necessary and voting on it, approving it. We will also be nominating members of the congregation to fill two empty positions on council. Please try to attend in two weeks so that we can have a good congregational meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Please stand now for our communion prayer as well as to receive the blessing. Let us pray. Most High God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Christ Jesus, our host and our guest. God of hope fills us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus 